Welcome to the real deal. Hey guys, welcome to a guide on how to build defensive team comps for classical and 3v3 arena with me, the real deal. Um, just before we kick today's video off, first of all, um, I just want to say thank you. I hit 100 subs on Saturday. I know it's not crazy big numbers, but you know what? I do appreciate all the love and support I'm getting and you know what? It makes a big difference to me. So I really want to say thank you for that. So thank you. Um, and yeah, so let's get into the reason why you're all here. So um, I'm going to teach you how to build uh, defensive team comps. Um, they're a lot harder to do than offensive. Um, and what we'll do is we'll look at some like some different team comps and then I'm going to give you a big fat list of all different champions you can use to fill those roles and you know so you can start building your own teams and what I really want to try and do is give you the knowledge and tools so you can build your own teams and you know what they say you know um, there was once a wise man that said you know give a man a fish he eats for a day give a man a fishing rod some boots a boat He'll go for a couple of weeks and then he'll quit because he'll get bored. But um, sorry, that's a terrible analogy. But you get you get the idea. You know what I mean. So yeah, let's uh, let's not miss around. Let's get straight into it. So first up, we've got our speed team, and this is this is more of like an early mid game uh, speed team. And what I would say as well is early early on in arena, your offensive team is going to double up as your defensive teams. But anyway, so we've got Skullcrown in the lead as um, she has the best speed aura. Hikatoon, you want to build a fast, make sure you're hitting dragon, you're getting that speed gear. Flat stats, we don't care, we only care about speed. So we are stacking her with speed and making sure she is super fast. So she will uh, go first and boost our turn meter. And then we've got Man Eater, who's going to be really fast as well. Triple speed set, he'll go second, he's going to put unkillable on us. Uh, then Skullcrown's going to hit them hard and then Kale's going to finish off any survivors and you need to make sure that you do go first because if, you if you're not fast enough you're going to lose the speed race and then you know you lose um, and the other thing is that like I say this is an early team comp um, sort of early to mid is that people don't have buff strippers and they don't have like Rotos who's going to go through block damage or unkillable buffs and stuff like that uh, man eater can be replaced by any champion with block damage uh, unkillable buff or death on revive so revive on death let's get that the right way around eh all right so next up we've got another speed team which is the upgraded version so this is sort of more mid to end game so we've got arbiter so she's got a good speed aura she's got good turn meter boost so she's going to keep us nice and fast then we've got hegemon who is going to disrupt the enemy team um, he could be replaced by a Lady Kimmy, um, Yoshi, Valkyrie. I know they're all legendaries. Unfortunately, as you get high up in the arena, your options sort of do limit down. Um, but yeah, so got like Hegemon in there for disruption. So he's cutting in. So basically, yeah, we want someone that's cutting in, um, putting out like fear or blocking skills or something like that and just disrupting the enemy team. Then Lydia would go next and throw out um you know decrease defense and weaken she's also going to block revives um, and she also put strength on us and speed boost as well so that's good and then we've also got uh gaius who's going to throw out bombs and cc them with sleep so really strong and yeah they should be able to wipe out um an offensive team quite easily so strong very strong team comp there so then we've got like sort of I, I'd say this is more of like a, it's very hard to get a high resistance team very early on. So I say this is sort of like a mid game, uh, sorry, yeah, mid game team comp. So we've got Razin in the lead. Um, he's got a decent um resistance aura, and he's basically his role is to do damage and hurt the enemy team. You could build him fast and with accuracy, so he drops turn meter. But personally, I'd like to build him tanky. Um, you need to have like two hundred speed, but Lots of resistance, defense, crit rate, and crit damage. So he's going to smack hard. Then we've got Vogoff, who's a brilliant champion. Whenever you bring her into a team, it makes it very hard for the enemy. Um, because, you know, if they bring in any AoE nukers, she's going to be healing us up. Um, Brogni, basically block, block debuffs. And he puts out shields with more healing, so more survivability there. 
and then we've got sand slash who is just an amazing champion all around um so basically she will put um block block damage on herself and then ally protection on the rest of the team if their hp drops below 50 keeping them alive and she won't take any damage so you build her pretty slow yeah it's like a, it's the first time ever you don't need speed on someone um, but otherwise she just needs lots of defense lots of resistance uh crit rate and crit damage and she hits hard and you can also put some accuracy in there if you want to um just a little bit of accuracy because she can provoke and she also uh, decreases um buffs on the enemy as well by one turn uh brogni you want to build him just lots of hp um you could put him in a guardian set shield set's really good on him as well or triple immortal and Vogoff as well, triple mortal on Vogoff. And yeah, they should be able to keep your teams alive if you go second. So really strong team comp. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you the masteries for Brogni. Because he has very specific ones for uh, for the role in this team. And I'll just show you um, the standard sort of mastery tree you take for high resistant tanky teams. So let's have a look at masteries. Um, so I don't actually have Brogni built for Arena, but I do have my Seeker built for this specific role. So he's got very specific masteries. Um, so basically he'll be taking a lot of the damage. That's why we build him with so much HP. So we take Selfless Defender. Decreases the damage an ally receives from the first enemy hit in each round by 20%. This champion will receive that damage instead. And then we also pair up with Bulwark. So it decreases the damage all allies receive by 5%. This champion will receive that damage instead. So Seeker's really reducing all the AoE damage that our teammate's going to be taking, and he's going to be taking that instead. Um, I haven't finished. I have. I, I realised never finished his uh his build. But what I would do is I'll probably take Cycle Revenge to keep his turn meter going. And I'd say with Seeker you don't really need lasting gifts, but for Brogni I would definitely take that because um you want to keep his buffs on him for as long as possible. So that's a really good option. And let's have a quick look at. Um, your sort of standard um, high resistance uh, tanky team mastery. So who have I got? Um, um, yeah, so I couldn't find the masteries I was looking for. So you know, I thought, let's have a look at our good friend, Mr. Ayumi Love. Um, so these masteries here are fantastic on Duchess. Um, these are very sort of what standard ones you use on tanky um, champions that need resistance so you'd take this sort of very standard defense tree here uh, the support tree can vary because sometimes you might need a bit of accuracy if you're landing um, debuffs on the enemy or you've got like you know you can lock out skills and stuff like that and then the other thing is um, say you've got a tanky defensive nuka like Razin like Sand Slash you would take the middle tree here like that but then you'd also take the offensive tree and sort of get crit rate crit damage and then it's up to you sort of how you build down here down the middle but you wouldn't take helm smasher you would take unshakable over that because it's going to give you the survivability and you'll probably hit so hard it doesn't matter about getting the helm smashers anyway um quick disclaimer though if you do you know every champion is different so there are no bog standard masteries these are sort of quite standard but every champion needs to be built differently so I'd say make sure you do your homework, do your research, uh, and don't just blindly copy masteries and have a think about what you're putting on them. So now we've got our upgraded high resistance team. So we've got Lydia in the lead. She has a 100 aura, uh, resistance aura, which is just crazy. And then we've got Seeker, who's giving us... Oh, actually, let's focus on uh, Lydia first. So Lydia, um, she's going to drop their defense, put out weaken... Um, she will put strengthen and increase our speed as well, which is really useful. And she can block revives. And after you've killed a champion, she'll block the revive. But then she can also throw out block active skills as well. So locking out their skills so they can't revive again on her A3. Seeker is going to keep our turn meter boosted. Um, he can also provoke. And in this build, he's um, in a shield set. Really tanky, lots of HP. And... Um, he was in those, I showed you the masteries earlier, so he's going to be taking, absorbing all that damage and keeping our teammates alive. Then we've got Sand Slash, as I said before, um, just that all that amazing survivability in her kit and does damage. And then we've got Helior. So Helior is very, very stat hungry. He needs lots of resistance. 
Um, he doesn't need accuracy because basically his resistance um, also works as accuracy. So that's a really cool passive. Um, but he needs crit rate, crit damage, he needs speed, he needs defense, and he needs a bit of uh, HP as well to keep him alive. But um, he sort of, he's like a cleanser in a strange way. Um, so on his A3, he'll remove all debuffs from your teammates and then throw them on the enemy. So for example, say he threw bombs on us, he's going to turn around and go, no, you blow up. And he'll throw all those bombs on, on the enemy and it'll just blow them apart or whatever else they've put out. Stuns, sleep, drop defense, whatever it is, he's going to switch it up and throw it back at them. So amazing champion. Really, really like him in this team comp. Um, and he also hits pretty hard. Not as hard as Sand Slash, but he still hits pretty hard. And it's quite good because he's a different affinity to Sand Slash. Um, say you come up against a Trunda, um, Helior can drop the Trunda where Sand Slash may get weak hits and not do as much damage. So yeah, really, I love this team comp. I actually use it all the time. So solid, solid team comp right there. In fact, I use it in 3v3 um, gold to arena and it's, it stands up pretty well. So it's a solid, solid team comp. Next up, we've got a stall team. So I'll talk you through this basic team first and then we'll talk about a more advanced one. So we got Deacon. He's got speed aura. He's good bursting out. Uh, Bursting, boosting our turn meter, and he's going to decrease the enemy's turn meter, and then he's going to throw out decrease uh, defense and weaken. We've got Basher to um, lock out their skills, and then we've got Rector to um, you know perfect veil keep us you know decreases AOE damage, does really good healing and revives, and then Magna is going to come in as our threat, and he's going to absolutely nuke the absolute fudge at the enemy. Uh, Deacon. An upgraded version of this would be uh, instead of Deacon, we would have Duchess, then we'd have Warlord. You know, Rector could be any champion, to be honest, here. And then um, we'd have like Candrophon. A uh, magic Usaga. Usaga would be really cool in here. And then Candrophon. So the idea of a stall team is that you just end up taking so long to kill because you just keep locking them out, or and it's really hard for them to kill you. And you've got one champ. You don't have to have a nuker in there, but I, I think it's always good to have a nuker because you can like kill their their nuker, and then they can't really do any damage to you. But the whole point of a stall team is just to waste as much time of the enemy as possible, so they just get to the point where they just rage quit, or they you know they just get so frustrated and they've just wasted so much time. So that's the whole point of a stall team. Next up, we've got revivers. Um, so. You do get, um, I've seen like champ people where they've had like four revivers and they're all super tanky and you just can't kill any of them. And if you do kill one, they just bring them back up and it's super frustrating. And um, so this one's Rector, Godseeker, Shaman and Rotos. So Rector, like I just said, amazing champion. Godseeker has two revives. So if someone gets killed, she'll quickly bring them back up. And then she's got another revive in her skills as well. Um, Sky Touch, not really a reviver, but they have revive on death. So sort of are. And then we've got Ratos who will just come in and pick them off one by one. So really interesting team comp. I wouldn't say this one's super strong, but uh, it's the best sort of revives that I've got, unfortunately. But I'm sure if you play Arena enough, you will come across team comps where they've got like a Raglin or a Duchess, or Seafy, you know, uh, that would be like an upgraded version of this team, is just have those three champions in there instead. Um, yeah. So those are sort of the four core teams, which are like Speed, Higher Resist, Stall, and Revivers. I can't really think of any other teams, but if I have missed one, please leave a comment and just sort of say, you know, real deal, how did you miss this team? And just like, tell me what it is, because... I can't really think, uh, and I play a lot of arena, and I can't think of another team comp, so yeah. So the last two things I want to talk about is synergy and how I think when I'm building a team. So synergy is basically champions that work well together. So we've got Skullcrown and Sinatia, who obviously work really well together. They're sisters, um, but Skullcrown, you know, she, she does loads of damage when they've got more than 50 HP, and then Sinatia will finish them off when the HP is below 50. 
and they pair really nicely with Valkyrie because Valkyrie is going to put counter attack on them and big fat shields to protect them. And when they get hit, they're going to smash everyone with their A1s because they on their A1s they do AoE damage. So they're going to go pow 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 pow. And you know, it's really going to mess up the enemy team. And then the reason we've got Hegemon in there is because he is going to lock out their skills and you know, he's going to mess up their team. And Valkyrie also is going to mess up their turn order and push back turn meters and all sorts of nasty stuff. So it's not like an amazing team, but it's just an example of synergy. And then team 12 is, I just want to give you my thought process when building a team. So first off, Vogoff. Vogoff is a very solid champion. If you ever pull her, she's an amazing option for the arena. So I bought her in because if there's any AoE nukers, um, she's just going to be healing our team. So she sort of forces the enemy team not to use an AoE nuker. I mean, they still can, but you know, this team is built to wreck um, AoE nukers, so they probably won't. And the other thing that's great about us, a lot of block revive champions, their abilities are on AoE abilities. So they can't really, you know, if, I, if they bring a Foley in, Vogoff is going to be healing us up and keeping us alive. So it's not really a good option for them. Then we've got Mithrala as a cleanser. So if they bring in like bombs or try to sleep us, you, and Mithrala, you can't really lock her out because she's got such high resistance. Um, it's just crazy. So you can't really lock her out and she's going to just cleanse our team of bombs and CC and any other nasty stuff that's coming our way. And then we've got Brogni, who, you know, he's going to keep us alive with shields and block debuffs as well. So that's really annoying. And then we've got Michelle, um, because of his speed aura, he's going to keep us nice and fast. And he's super tanky, so lots of HP. And he's going to do loads of damage to the enemy team. And if his passive procs, he's going to kill someone and he's going to block revive them. So really nasty team comp there. And just like, it's just, I wouldn't say this is like super OP, but it's just to give you an idea how to build team comps when you're thinking um and then the last tip i want to give is when i'm in the arena and i come up against a really strong team and i can't beat it and i've got the same champions i will screenshot or you know um, yes yeah, uh, take a screenshot on my phone or my pc and copy carbon copy that team comp um because i've seen some amazing team comps and stuff that you just don't think of and you can just carbon copy it uh, so and you can just copy it and you know and you can figure out what gear they've got and try and figure out what stats you need and what masteries and you know you can just go to hellhades.com um a yumi love and there's all different websites with gears and masteries that you can put your champions and you can build them differently as well you know not everyone has to be built the same um but yeah and you can just copy their team and that's another way of just learning different team comps and helping you progress in the game this is my big fat list of champions for defense so first of all we've got the revivers and what i've tried to do is categorize champions by their very core and what i think is like what they're you know what they actually is their main role um and so we start off with the revivers and then we've got from early to mid to late so raglin late game champion obviously she's good from early to mid to late um and sort of i've put here like godseeker mid because she sort of starts to fall off um towards the late game and if i'd recommend building them for um arena so raglin late game yes i would recommend they've got an aura and they revive they've got survivability and they're a cleanser so she's ticking a lot of boxes and the more boxes champions tick um the better they are going to be it well the more likely it is they're going to be better in arena and what i will do is i will put this uh, as a link in the description so everyone can download a copy and i will try and update it from time to time as new champions come out yeah so we've got our revivers first then we've got our unkillable and block damage and revive on death champions then we've got cut in and disruption so like tallman lady kimmy yoshi real shame that there's only legendaries that really do this job um, survivability so usaga um so what she will do is she reduces aoe damage and like iron bargo so he'll kill kill he'll he will help kill keep jesus christ get it together man um so iron bargo he will keep our team alive with his pass uh, so with his aura and his passive which is really bumping up our defense 
I mean, loads of great champions there like Witha, Necred, Kyoku, uh, Lydia, all absolutely amazing champions. Cleansers, um, I've only got two there. Um, if, if there's any cleansers you can think of that I've missed that are great for defensive arena, please put, put it in the comments and just, you know, real deal, wake, wake the fudge up. You've missed these amazing champions. Uh, defensive nukers, I've put all the ones in that I can think of. And as you can see, to be fair, with defensive nukers, they're only really in there for one role. But um, they can fill other roles as well. So like Ultan, he sort of can revive. So if he kills someone, he can get a revive. Um, but I don't, I've don't. i never seen him in late game arena anymore. So I wouldn't really recommend building him. And then a whole bunch of CC champions. Got a rare there. We've got a Null Horn. And champions that provoke. And what you can do is you put them in a uh, free step and anyone that hits them will get frozen. So that's a really good um, way to catch people off guard. So you're going to provoke them and freeze the champions when they get hit. And it also will counter any nuke, uh, AoE nuke champions, which are very common for offensive teams. And then we've got sort of champions that are doing block debuffs. So I've only put in like three there. Counter attackers, there's only three in the game um, that do AoE um AOE counterattacks on your teammates. And then, yeah, and then just like the best speed uh, champions that I could think of. So, yeah, so I really hope, so yeah, I really hope this will help you build your own team comps. And what we'll do is I'll show you how to quickly test a team out in Arena. So, we're going to test um, our team comps out. And how you do this is you just go into Classic Arena, burn a token, or you can do it in 3v3, it's up to you. So we're going to use this synergy team and um, just set up the skill order. So we want skull crown to obviously use this first because it does the most damage. Uh, Valkyrie, I want her to open. Um, so basically she's just going to push back 10 meter of the enemy and then she'll do counter attacks and shields. Hegemon is going to um, try and put them out with crippling cold. Um, and then Snacia, I only wanted to do burning wave. So save that. And now for the scary part. Just let it run full auto because that's what would happen if you were, um, you know, a defensive team. So she's going to push back the term of skull crown. She's going to push it back a little bit further. And the only thing I'm worried about is if, um, yeah, that's what I'm scared of. Um, what's her name? Madame. Oh, come on. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that was the only thing I was scared of is with that team comp with Madame stripping um, counter-attack off us. But yeah, managed to get the win. So that's how you test teams out. So basically, get a team, put them in, like, you know, use them as your offensive team, let it fall to a run, test it out on a couple of teams. If it gets uh, quite a few wins, passes the test, stick them in. Start using them in, in Classic Arena or in your 3v3 teams. And yeah, and that's how you, that's how you start to build comps. So thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, I hope this has been really helpful. And once again, thank you so much for all your love and support. Please leave me a cheeky thumbs up and make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe. And I'll see you in my next video. Peace.